Hi, my name is Drayson Mead. This is my 2008 BMW E90 335i. The car has a Texas Speed sleeve stock 5.3 block. It's 388 cubic inch. It's a 4.125 bore uh, stock 5.3 stroke. It's a crank rod piston deal, K1 crank, ARP main studs, Texas Speed I-beam rods, Wiseco pistons. It's a cam motion ground, 238, 248. Uh, 116 plus 4 LSA. The car has a F80 DCT behind it. I drove a buddy's F80 one time and I, I knew I had to have a DCT in something. Just the feel of the trains is, is amazing. It's controlled by HTG unit. It's a Polish brand. It's a full standalone deal. We steal all the all the solenoids from the trains. Control it that way. Got SSP, Spec X clutches and baskets. It's got the Slim's Jet, Big Mama billet oil pan. And that's about it for the trains. It's, very surprising, it's living actually. It's bone stock gear set, synchros, everything inside bone stock. PRC 247 heads, uh, 68 cc chambered, the biggest I could get them in. Custom turbo kit made by Travis Ball of Ball Metal Fabrication and Hot Rods. We started with LS3 manifolds, cut the ends off, you know, V-band, normal stuff. Twin precision 67-66s, twin 40 millimeter gates, three inch turbo back, all the way to the bumper with three inch loud valves about under the driver's seat, passenger seat. So NCC fab, 1500 horsepower vertical flow. Got a Pro Charger, Big Red Race. I had it laying around, so we used it. BTR equalizer intake manifold on top of it with the rails. The Bosch 210 fuel injectors. The super simple fuel setup. Got a stock BMW intake pump feeds the surge tank. Twin 525s in the surge tank. Dash 10 feed comes to wide. Do dual eights to the rails. Dual eights out to a single eight return. All the tuning on the car has been done by me. Engine, trans. The trans was a learning curve. I, I've had the HTG unit for a year, year and a half now. It wasn't a whole lot of information on it. It was it's still a relatively new swap. Learning curve on that, but I'm super excited with the progress that HTG's made with firmwares and, and my ability to tune them. The car, the car drives great. The low load upshifts, the downshifts the, with the throttle blips, the, the full throttle upshifts and everything. It's, it's such a blast to drive. Yeah, so 
he was uh, showing me that you can use this or the paddle shifters, which uh, yeah, you can shift off here. Works the same way. I just my hands are always on the wheel anyway. Right. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he built it up a little bit from four to six. So we're gonna see what that does. Cars ran on a Max ECU race unit. It's a Swedish company. Super awesome engine management. Uh, CAN bus protocol is all supported. So hook up your CAN high low, turn on the protocol for the chassis. Everything works. Really like it. Built in EGTs, so that's super nice to have as well. As for suspension stuff, it's pretty simple. It's got some Raceland coilovers on the front with some QA1 springs on them. Played around spring rates. That took a couple tries before I found a spring rate that I liked. As for the rear, it has stock lower control arms, has trailing arms, aftermarket trailing arms, aftermarket tow arms, has stock springs with uh, some airbags in them actually, stiffen it up a little with strange dual adjustable shocks. The rear end is in an aluminum IRS 8.8 .8 from a Ford Explorer, I believe it's like a 2007 model. It's got DSS axles, got the baddest axles they can make me, they've been in the car for like three years now, never had a problem with them. As for the brakes, to fit the 15s, it has some base model brakes on it, actually, just 328i brakes. The car sits on welds and F71s, super basic, clean, I like them. The 18x5s in the front, 15x10s in the back. Fronts are a 18560 R18, the rears are a 27560 R15 Mickey Thompson Pro. With me in it and the bag of Quick Crete in the trunk, the car is right around 4,000 pounds with a full tank of gas. Best draggy times, it's been 431, 60 to 130, uh, 385, 100 to 150. Top 71, 29. Based on the weight of the car, the draggy data I've collected, I estimate the car to make about 1100 horsepower to the wheels. Never drag race the car on this combination. Heavy stock trains don't break nothing. Um, just got back from Texas 2K. I did do the roll racing there. My ended up going 171. I've changed the setup. I've been really focused on keeping it street car. What's been your favorite thing with the car so far? Like with this latest iteration, the different things you've done? The trans. Yeah. The trans is a blast. It's like I said, it had a 480. It was it was a ripper, but it was boring. Big converter, four speed thing. Um, you know, I got throttle blips on the downshifts now, the seven speeds. Just driving it's so much more fun. DCTs, as far as swaps and stuff. Uh, not very common as far as I know. So. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of considering we how you do it is you you hijack all the solenoids. Really, you you you've got to rewire every solenoid in the trans. And having the ability to, you know, I drive this thing in traffic. I drove around Texas 2K. You know, unload it, drive it in Houston traffic. Does great stop and go. Um, there's a lot going on in there. You know, there's like I want to say there's six seven tables per shift. Okay. Up and down. And you know, you have your take up leaving from a stop you know there's any stall tables there's you know, once it's in gear driving it's pretty easy it's a clutch pressure table line pressure but the, the yeah there's a lot that goes into it a lot of loops in my neighborhood learning how to tune it i was gonna say because probably that the slower stuff is harder to to tune in and oh, get yeah. balanced and the, the lower the gear the harder it is to make smooth because there's a pre-fill pressure there's a rise time there's a lot going on and the short gears are the low gears are so short you feel any kind of imperfection in your in your tunes a map i guess 
Yeah, there's a bunch of maps. Yeah. There's like I said, there's a pre-fill pressure, there's a pre-fill pressure time, there's a rise time, there's a shift pressure, right over my shift head, pressure bro. time, there's a spread time. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of information whenever I first started. I, just, I drove my buddies a DCT car. I said, man, I, I gotta have something with a DCT unit. You know? So I bought the HTG unit. Not a lot of info out there. I was I was by no means the first to do it. Long story short, yeah. Uh, uh, my buddy Andre, he's in Florida. He, he put a DCT in his car. We kind of worked through some bugs and issues together on that. Right. Um, there's been a lot of people that I've talked to about it, talked with about it, helped out. They helped me. You know, you only run into so many things by yourself. It's getting more popular. Um, these transmissions are stout. Yeah. I mean, like I said, this is a stock gear gear set train. That's crazy, man. Clutches and baskets and a... Uh, the fact that it's so factory and dealing with LS core. Versus, oh yeah, you know, you know, I'm not gentle on it. You know, I give it. You know, if, if the traction's there, I give it the boost as fast as I can. I have torque management on the shifts. You know, okay. I pull timing on the shifts that ramp it back. Yeah, you were seeing a boost yeah. by gear and all that. Uh, you kind of have a yeah, it's boost by speed or boost by speed. Yeah. yeah, based off front wheel speed. The uh, the clutches don't like to couple if I don't do a, a torque management after about the 600, 700 horsepower mark. They, uh, you can just tell if I turn it off, the shifts aren't. Not, not happy. No, they don't like it that much. <laughs> four or five years ago did your typical m54 stuff full bolt on e85 it's a good time went a little more put a single on it tapped out the turbo that was on it put a precision 67 66 on it had fun with the manual trains for a little while um, ended up been in three rods so put rod pistons in the motor and right after that we put a four lady in the car and wanted to do some drag racing stuff it went bottom tins consistently, almost like a bracket car. Um, ended up putting nitrous on the car, sprayed 100 shot in it. Car went 991 at 139. I was wanting to make some more power. LS, obviously, easiest, most reliable way to do it most of the time. I found this guy, Michael Page, LS E9X, which wasn't a thing at the time, but I found this guy, Michael Page, who had swapped one. I worked with him, um, he, he cut me up some mounts for it, transmission mount, motor mounts. Put a 5.3 in the car. Naturally, I put a power adder on it. Wanted to do a, a blower. Bought a very large pro charger. It just didn't work, didn't make power. I think we narrowed it down to the headers, just too small. The bolt-in options just weren't there for these cars. So, put twins on the 5.3. And I think it was around that time we started working on getting the factory dash and everything working with Michael Page again. He made some kind of little device. And we had factory dash, tack, speedometer, fuel gauge, all that stuff, oil tamp. So put five threes on the car for a lady. Had a lot of fun with that, beat the crap out of it. Made a little over a thousand wheel. Went 951 off the trailer and 
the track told me not to do that anymore, but they let me run it to the eighth. Uh, best to win in the eighth on that setup was 6-0 at 120. Didn't get a lot of seat time with that setup. So I heard the thrust bearing on the 5.3. That made me go ahead and assemble the, the new power plant for the car. And this, here we are.